knowledge. Anyway, we're going to have a couple more. So the first one, or the next one rather, not first, obviously it's been several. Next one on Blackstone Arena, or I think it's Blackstone Arena. Which is going to be Skybrush as serious atrocious as... That is an odd way to spell atrocious. Anyway, atrocious as Croak against Aimbot and Binary. I believe these two actually played in ESL recently. Or in the qualifiers. I was noticing... I recall seeing them in Indred's casts. So yeah. Binary as Bako and Aimbot as Ashka. Which there's so many Ashkas. We've seen a lot of Ashkas. I kind of picked these at random from a bunch that Skybrush gave me. Didn't mean to have so many Ashkas, but yeah. Ashka's a thing. Ashka comes out a lot. So, Troach is going for Venom Strike. Pretty typical. Get that bonus damage and the Valiant or Adrenaline Rush, the Valiant Leap bonus damage as well for Binary. And there's the Valiant Leap. There's that bonus damage. Ooh, actually, no. Adrenaline Rush never paid off that time. And it looks like at this point, Red Team is kind of getting forced away, but at the same time, Skybrush putting themselves into 2v1 situations. And Blue Team losing control of center. Aimbot trying to take center. Ooh, nice. Ooh, that Lava Strike. If, oh, if only Binary hadn't hit the Petrify Shield down, that Lava Strike would have left... That would have left the center rune open. Red Team would have totally had that. Instead, Blue Team gets it. Skybrush waiting for a proper opportunity to use Astral Beam, and I think this is it. Luna striking out, and... I don't know. I mean, clearly Skybrush is saving him, because they normally would be using their EX Celestial Strike at this point. There it is! And getting a pretty hard Blood Axe hit. But still, that kind of turned it around. That really damaged Binary's health. But Binary going for the same thing, going for the ultimate into... Ooh, nice teamwork there. Flame Strike on top of that. Unfortunately, don't see Aimbot going for the jump. Did they have Searing Flight on cooldown? They must have Searing Flight on cooldown. Because I don't see any other reason why that would happen. And nice to see coming out there. Didn't quite work out. Good dodge from Baco. I mean, good dodge from Binary. That's what they want to do. Get the heck out of there. And another camouflage not really working out. You know, that's a 10-second cooldown. You got to make use of that. The Deceit was a good idea. Although, admittedly, in a 1v1 situation, Deceit, while good, is more just, you know, it's good for setup kind of thing. And it looks like Red Team managed to get that. Binary with that extra health. But the camouflage stun getting stopped. Nice Valiant Leap timing. And, whoops, let's watch that again. I mean, it's... There's the ultimate. Outside. Gotta say, that's some really good positioning. That was I don't know if that was intentional from Binary, but that spacing, that kept them right inside of the... That right, right inside of the bounds. Right inside of the safe area. That whole time. That was clever. I like that. So now, I'm a bit curious about Binary's choice. I'm pretty sure that Atrocious is going to go for extra healing. And Skybrush, of course, going for... Oh no, Atrocious going for Frog Leap bonus damage. Okay. And damage reduction from Binary. And, of course, Searing Flight Shield. Because Ashkas always go for that. So, a bit more defensive from the red team. Kind of makes sense. I mean, granted, Binary did work out pretty well. But still, you want to be kind of safe. Especially with the Croak around. And once again, moving in. At this point, just Binary is really focusing down Skybrush. They get Luna Struck a lot. And that is getting Aimbot hurt quite a bit. I mean, it's... For the most part, there's, they're able to focus down Atrocious, but still, Aimbot has been taking a fair amount of damage from those Luna Strikes coming in. And a nice ultimate hitting, hitting Skybrush. There's quite a lot of damage. And finishing off Skybrush, Aimbot's ultimate at this point... I mean, Atrocious might go for an ultimate, but I don't think they are. Honestly, they should be going for Deceits. They need those Deceits. No, they're going for the ultimate instead. That's not really gonna... I mean, it dealt some damage, not really much. Didn't really amount to anything. That's what I mean. With with Croak, you can't really go for your ultimate all that much because it's easily dodged. Deceit, on the other hand, would just be 1v1. Like, the game becomes 1v1 briefly. However, we do have a 1v1, but in a very disadvantageous position for Atrocious. Aimbots basically just got hit once with flint, with a firestorm, like a couple firestorm bolts, maybe a couple fire bolts. Yeah, now it's a couple firestorm bolts, and that's it. I mean, good healing coming in, but still, definitely 
it seems like Trocious trying to turn the game around. Actually, Aimbot taking a lot of damage in the outside area, but Atrocious not able to get enough damage in. I mean, that... That camouflage did not quite work. Like, there was one that came up just before the death. It was like... Actually, did it even come up? There was this toxin there, I mean, that was a... Yeah, there was the camouflage, but it was totally out of range. Didn't manage to get any damage in. That managed to get some damage in. And for the amount of damage that was dealt, and especially with the outside area dealing all this damage to aimbot, didn't quite do the trick, though. So, red team up 2-0. Blue team's got to try to run this back, and what they've really got to focus on is staying together. That has been their main weakness here. I mean, Binary has been doing their job. Because part of Bako's job, part of pretty much any melee hero's job, but particularly one like Bako or Rook, you want to put your opponents into a position where one of them is out of the team and is just getting completely wailed on. That is the entire, that is a large part, not the entire point, but that is a large part of your strategy. And Binary focusing that even more with the Shield Sprint. And Skybridge going with standard Illumination. And Frog Leap healing, so nothing too out of the ordinary for the others. Pretty much just going for the healing rights. Or extra healing rights. And once again, Binary with that splitting strategy. And once again, it getting hit by those Lunar Strikes. And like I said, the main problem with that is more so Aimbot getting damage. Now Aimbot at this point doing okay, but Blue Team also doing okay. Neither team's managed to deal a whole lot of meaningful damage. Blue Team taking that center rune, and Red Team now with a bit more meaningful damage. One thing to always bear in mind, if you don't have a healer on your team or support on your team, you're really needing that center rune more than normal. And especially since there isn't a lot of healing going on for the red team. There's a bit, Aimbot has some on Flame Strike, but that's it. And nice Petrify. Ooh. A little bit mistimed the Firestorm Bolt there. They probably wanted to do it right as Petrify ended. Didn't quite work out. Ooh. Ultimate miss is not what they want, and Aimbot so heavily damaged, they cannot stay in this fight. And unfortunately, triggering the counter, allowing them to be focused down. Good Searing Flight to get out of the way. Binary taking most of the heat from that Astral Beam, but still, that's. It's not enough, and with the double 1v1s, good Lava Strike there. <laughs> good Lava Strike, get on mount, get back to a 1v1 situation, or 2, 1v2 situation. Stop. Well, once again, it's just, it's really hard for Red Team to take that hit. They cannot take any hits. Good shot at Lava Strike, but not enough, not close enough to stop Atrocious from doing their job. And at this point, Skybrush needs one good hit. And that, did that, I can't believe the EX Celestial Strike missed. That would have been a kill. Aimbot is so low that basically anything Skybrush does will kill. Actually, anything either team will do, either of them will do, will kill. And I think Blue Team got that rune again. Yeah, they did. So Blue Team with the rune once again. If Red Team had that, this would still be a match. But now, looks like Aimbot's down. Binary is gonna drop soon after. I mean, the guy of the ultimate. They're gonna try their best. If they can line it up, if they can get rid of Skybrush, it would help. But I don't know if they have this match. Just not getting that rune is a huge blow. Good Valiant Leap, good Bulwark as well, get out of the way, but unfortunately a little bit early, and the ultimate goes off, deals no meaningful damage, and that is a win for, or a round for Blue Team. So Blue Team on the board. Definitely needed to focus a little more on making sure they didn't get focused down, and managing to deal some meaningful damage to Aimbot early on that really just chipped them away. Like, a lot of that was chipping away the red team and making sure the red team didn't get that rune. They got it, like, once. But overall, Red Team did not get the rune, and that meant Blue Team just keep their health up. Because Blue Team's a bit more focused on that. I mean, Atrocious, as Croak, has the Venom healing. And Sirius, of course, is a support character with a healer. So that is a big deal. That is something you gotta have. And now Binary getting kind of focused down. Although, in a double 1v1 situation, and from there to Atrocious getting almost focused down. Good Lunar Strike, though. Making sure that there's no 1v2 against Atrocious. And now Skybrush trying to avoid Binary getting too close. Man, that was a really good lap. I mean, that's the thing. Aimbot's really just petrifying very nicely. They're doing it nicely defensively. They're doing it nicely offensively. It's tough, though, because the thing is, it hasn't really paid off except for the... Like, the defensive ones have paid off. They've helped. And actually, at this point... Ooh, nice avoidance of the counter there. Skybrush taking a lot of heat. A lot of damage taken. And Aimbot getting out of there. Setting up for a 2v1. And Skybrush... Awesome counter. They would have died if that... I mean, if that counter hadn't been triggered, they would have died. It was a good timing of the counter. It was unfortunate that the red team triggered it, and at this point, 
Did Aimbot have... They must have had... I think they had Searing Flight on cooldown, although both Searing Flight and Molten Fist? Both of those avoid the Croak ultimate, so... I think they had Molten Fist off cooldown. Unfortunately, I can't check in replay, but I didn't see them use it. Searing Flight, I saw them use, so that was off cool. That was on cooldown. And there is the Deceit for the win. I mean, nicely done there. We just saw Blue Team just basically sticking together, holding around. A lot of, lot of fights for the 1v2, or the 2v1. Make sure to get the 2v1, but really, it kind of came down to this one. I mean, that one fight, really, if Skybrush had not had the counter triggered, that would have basically done it. Because that counter here was right there. Yeah, if that hadn't been triggered, that would have been game. Because it would have been a 1v2 against Atrocious. Now, Atrocious at full health. Oh, that's right. That right there. That explosion. That venom. That did the trick. That was the thing that won it for Red Team. Was Aimbot not getting out of there. Not getting invulnerable in the time they needed to be invulnerable to avoid that ultimate actually killing them. So, final rights coming up here, and looks like, well, Skybridge being somewhat defensive. Binary and Atrocious. Actually, Atrocious is also being defensive. Binary is the only one who's going for deal more damage after an ultimate, which really makes sense. He only deals 60 damage, roughly, as Baka, like against a single character, you deal 60 damage with your ultimate, so dealing an extra 30 damage with the three charges makes a lot of sense. And hey, Bulwark Stun finally came up. Luna Strike not working out. Red Team managing to get a nice early advantage here. Skybrush trying to avoid getting focused down, but still the blue team is split up. Does manage to get the center rune, which is good, but they are behind, so it's more of an evening move. And now Ultimate coming in. Ultimate into Blood Axe. Did not hit, though. Celestial Strike, or sorry, Celestial Split being used at the perfect time. And another Bulwark Stun. I feel like blue team's getting a bit tired. They're not focusing as much on whether Bako has their Bulwark up or not. And to see coming in here... Once again, hitting the Bulwark, too, from a camouflage position. Nicely done. Binary is on point this round. Holy crap, they are doing everything right. Everything's going up their way. Though, at this point, Atrocious does manage to get the center orb. No use of Deceit, though. They really need to use Deceit. So hard they need to use Deceit. Even with Deceit, it's going to be tough. But their ultimate, yes, it has been working, but Aimbot is at full health. There's no way that's going to do much damage. It's not going to do any good. And unfortunately getting snared on, well, dropping from the mount, but still, it's more they just didn't get the center orb, and that, there's the Deceit. Hits the Bulwark as well. Biner just aiming that Bulwark in the right direction, and I'm not sure why Atrocious didn't try to go around it. I think they just really were desperate to get the hit. Because, I mean, if you look at the timing of it, you know, they go to Deceit. Now, they had, they didn't have a whole lot of time left. Yeah, that they were desperate. They needed that time. That was all they had, and... I guess they were hoping that Binary wouldn't aim in the right direction. But yeah, that Bulwark. Man, that last round was Bulwark around. That was it. The Bulwark decided it. I mean, really, Binary is putting on a clinic there for that last round. A little bit was timing, but it felt like that Bulwark was coming out just the right... Like, especially at the beginning, that very first Bulwark. Right there. Where is it? Like, right there. It was just... Come in, wait for the... Wait for them to come in. Like, Shield Bash in the right position, and then Bulwark in the middle of melee attacks. That is the perfect timing. That is when you want to do it. So, yeah, that was that. Good job, Binary Name Button, that match. So, the last game is going to be between... Let's see, who's the last match? Last match for tonight, last replay for tonight, will be Skybrush as Sirius, the Black Tea as Shifu, against... The another Shifu, Diza as Shifu, and Callisto as Ashka. Hope you like Ashka, because it's been Ashka night all night. So they should call it the award show for really good battle right play. The Ashkas! I'll see myself out. But not before finishing this match. So both Shifu's, of course, going for the heal on Impale, because that's what Shifu does. Skybridge, they're going for the standard weaken bonus, and I mean, all these rights are so standard. Like, this is the only right to go for, pretty much. I mean, occasionally you see Javelin Root, but that's rare. Anyway, Diza going for the Javelin, and Javelin to Celestial Strike, so it didn't quite work out to anything. 
and bit of a double 1v1 situation going on here. Diza getting some nice material hits in, Black T getting hit a fair bit, not managing to do a lot of damage. However, Red Team holding that center. Nice job getting the center orb, and Callisto is holding out behind a firewall. Black T taking a fair amount of damage trying to get in there. I mean, the one thing, of course, Red Team with the only ranged hero, it's going to be difficult, because Shifu is a melee hero of melee heroes. They're, they're not like Bako, for instance, where Blood Axe is their main thing. Their only ranged attack is Javelin, and that makes them just go into melee. I mean, it hits for some damage, but that's it. So really, that was... That was mostly just Ashka showing off. Hit all the things. Anyway, next one's probably gonna be, yeah, if there's Kunju Charges, Celestial Strike will be, sorry, Celestial Split Blinding most likely, and the Shield, and more Kunju Charges. That's one thing that's kind of disappointing, which hopefully will be changed in the next patch, the one with the Seeker in it. Hopefully they'll tweak the battle rights a bit, because it does feel like there's only one choice. It's not just a, like, a metagame thing, it's really kind of calculated. Anyway, ooh, nice flame strikes done there, forcing blue team out. Red team, not really in the center. In fact, it's more that Callisto's getting focused down, was split up and split up again. S -s both, okay, blue team focusing entirely on Callisto here. Does not want to let Callisto get any damage in. And Skybrush, wow, that's all the pressure. Skybrush Celestial splitting as the Javelin comes in, as the blue team takes the center orb, and there goes Callisto. Actually, blue team took the center orb, right? I feel like... Yeah. No, it's actually Red Team took the center orb. Never mind, my mistake. Diza stole that center orb. Nicely done, and once again we should see an Astral Beam because Skybrush loves using Astral Beam. There it is, right at the end of the Whirlwind into the Astral Beam, and that's not counterable. So both Kunjus are on cooldown. And nice timing for Immaterial, nice timing for the Fleet Foot there. Exactly what Diza needed, and ooh, perfect Tendon Swing. Perfect Kunju, however, coming in from Black T. Unfortunately, Diza did not have the charges to go for just standard an Impale. Because that Impale, I think, would have been death on Black T at the time. I'll jump back to that after the match is over, but I'm pretty sure that that Impale would have... An Impale would have made it a 1v1. It would have been a hard 1v1 against Skybrush. See, I was right about here. I mean, granted, the Impale damage wouldn't have been much, but... Let's see... One charge, and 12 damage. Oh, that would have been. That would have been 24. Not enough, though. A fully charged Impale would have done it. But with one charge of Impale, that would only have dealt 16 damage, I think, which wouldn't have been enough. I'd have to double-check the exact numbers, but yeah, it's pretty sure that Impale wouldn't have dealt anywhere near enough damage. Like, if all three charges were there, that would have been done. But unfortunately, the orb was not in the center, so there was no way, nothing to hit while the incapacity was running out. And way red team rapidly going for the center, it looks like that's sure what Black Team was up to. Red team with that center, Fleet Foot counter trigger, which allows, well, basically allows Skybrush to get right into Callisto. And not sure why Black Team was going for the petrified, petrified Diza there, but at any rate, Callisto getting two v one very rapidly, trying their best to get out of there, but not using the lava strike, not petrifying anything. Focusing entirely on flame strike. Not lava strike. I can't remember the exact wording, but not flame strike. That's the important thing. Their ex flame strikes are not being used, which would probably save their life many times over. Bit of waste in the astral beam, and Skybrush jumping in without. No, is that all their outs? I think they're okay. They're sunlight should be back up, and it looks like Red Team took that center orb again. And Sunlight out, Celestial Split still in, but that's going to need to be used. No, never mind. Lunar Strike being used to get out of that 1v1 there. Nice cancel from Callisto. Good ca good on you. Cancel that Firestorm. Don't trigger Kunju. But Callisto once again getting focused down, and... Ooh, nice Whirlwind. Very nice Whirlwind. That's, that is meaningful damage. Perfect timing on the Fleet Foot 2 to avoid Lunar Strike. So Diza doing a great job here, and another Astral Beam gets rid of Callisto. And Diza... Not ca not getting triggered. The Kunju's not getting triggered. Their Fleet Foot must have been off cooldown. Which kind of sucks, because they didn't manage to get that to work, but Whirlwind up. However, this is a bad 1v1. They didn't get the center orb. Blue team did, so blue team got all that health back. So much recoverable health, and of course, the healer there. It's going to take a while. The Whirlwind sh will not be enough. And the Impale misses, too. That is not what they want at all. Good Tendon Swing. Going for Skybrush, though. I think they want to go for the, the kill on Skybrush to prevent any healing. 
And D says Fleep, it should be off cooldown right now. There it is. And once again, triggering the counter. And that's one thing you gotta bear in mind when you're dealing with Shifu. Or, I mean, this composition in general, Skybridge and Blacktie's composition, Shifu and Sirius, that's all the counters. I mean, the thing you gotta deal with here is, as a melee, it's one of the hardest things as a melee character. You can't just swing. It's a really tricky lesson to learn, but you basically have to kind of stagger your swings a bit. Because oftentimes, if you're swinging mindlessly, if just swing, 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 hope to hit and kill, what'll happen is your opponent will know you do that. They'll counter. They'll put up a Kunju, put up a Sunlight, whatever their counter is. In this case, those are the two, but of course there's Berserk and any other, really. They'll throw that up there. And guess what? Now you dealt no damage. And in the case of both Sirius and Shifu, you've now put them in a position where they can choose to be wherever they like. So, really, you haven't managed... Actually, not... Sorry, Kunju puts you right next to the opponent, but still. You put them in an advantageous position. Like, that's the thing. That... You kind of want to stagger it so that you can bait out the counter someone. As it, It's much easier to bait counters out as a ranged character. You just throw out your bursty attack, make it obvious, they'll throw out a counter. It, at higher levels, it's harder to do, but still... If you time it right, they'll have to react. No, nice tendon swing to avoid the whirlwind. Nicely done, Diza what you want to do. And Callisto getting focused very hard. Good use of the ultimate, but unfortunately that means that they are basically, well, okay, using all their outs. They got out of there. I mean, Molten Fist is on cooldown at this point, so at this point Callisto going down, had no way out of there. Nice tennis swing from Diza. Got petrified at the end, though. Pretty good impale, mind you. That's one thing about Petrify, is that it does allow you to swing to get impaled. You don't deal damage, but you do at least get the bonus. Get all the charges. And nice whirlwind coming in. Ooh, there we go. 1v1 Diza and Black T. Diza loses this. That's gonna be it. And Skybrush. Sorry. Diza and Skybrush should say 1v1. So Diza. Ooh, they lost the center orb right there. Skybrush just stole it. Right under them. Nice celestial split. But yeah, it's gonna come down really to who fails to trigger counters. They're about the same health. They both have pretty much equal counters. Everything's off cooldown. And Diza gets hit first, does not counter that. Avoids the Lunar Strike. Okay, good Fleet Foot. Good avoidance of counter, good bait there. Diza's got on it. And Skybrush does trigger Diza's counter. Gets Tendon Swinged into, not quite into the muck. Takes a bit of damage from the muck from the outside, from the unsafe areas, but not quite enough. And this point, oh, another miss of the counter. Diza's really on point in this 1v1. Avoiding Lunar Strikes, avoiding counters, getting another Kunju trigger. And of course, the Kunju does add charges as well, thanks to the Battle Light. Tendon Swing in the center, not quite enough, and it looks like it's gonna go down to the muck, and that's what it comes down to indeed. What were they waiting for? I mean, they had Incapacitate. It's right here. Right here, there was an Incapacitate. Like, the Kunju got triggered, Tendon Swing got hit. Oh, yeah, I got triggered. Ooh, 44 health left, no easy way to deal with that. I think at that point, all they could really have done, because the longer they wait, the more likely Sunrise is back on cooldown, or back off cooldown, would have been just, like, the incapacitate is just the damage. Or keep swinging, hit the rune as much as possible, get the charges, impale, and then swing once and win. But yeah, that just came down to the outside. Chip damage up to, or chipping the damage up to, you got the outside. And that's it. And that's gonna be it. That was, that was a good set of matches. Thanks again, Skybers, for those replays. So, hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me tonight. And if you, any, if you have replays you want to have casted here, just send me a message either on like, a comment or over Twitter. Or just Or if you find me on Discord, just send me a message. If you want replays casted, because I really enjoy watching some good replays. And I do have replays, so I'm not desperate for it. It's just, if you want... Let me know. Throw them up here. Always glad to have them. But anyway, for now, thank you for watching and have a good night, everyone.